Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Junior Doan. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Junior Doan's The Spark. Joining me is fashion designer Han Fang. Along with designing for her brand, Han Fang has designed costumes for opera and film, including Madame Butterfly and the Karate Kid. Her clothing design and installations have been featured in major exhibitions. As a longtime champion and collector of art, she has opened the Han Fang Art Space in Shanghai. Welcome, Han. I'm just so excited to have you here. And you've had a long history in the world of fashion design and art. But how did you discover an interest in that part of life? Well, I think uh, uh, beginning, of course, I don't. Right. I remember my mom always telling me I'm so creative, but I don't right. know where that coming from. Yeah. So then after in the, in the high school, I realized I'm not very... I'm not the best student in math or in others. So I thought, oh, maybe I should uh, take a one year off to learn art, then go and try to go to art school. So I did. So I tried to take lessons to paint, watercolor, everything, like every kid learn. Yes. Now I, I thought I just testing it. Then I was lucky, got in the art school. Oh, they just to get in. Yeah, yes. in China. Now, in after, China? Yeah, You're but China. after school, I thought in China that time, I thought, so I, I don't feel I can have a freedom to creating oh. anything. I thought I should leave the country. So I came to New York. Then I thought, forget about the fashion, forget about the design, forget about the art. I should have found a job. Yes, <laughs> for practical. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I um, went to, I thought of my little English, maybe I should become a salesperson, can learn uh, English, same time learn American style. So the first day I went to Macy's, tell the, all the truth. I went to a very good art school, never worked before, and I want to find a job. They kicked me out. Oh. And then the same day, I walked to the Bloomingdale. Yes. So this time, I learned, I lied everything. I said, I, have a, I work in Chinatown. My mother have a shop in China. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, the ladies, I still remember her name called Mary. I yes. hope I can find her. I want to thank her. Right. Because she looked at pen hanging here. She said, oh, how, you, how you can sell this pen? I said, oh, beautiful, because it matches the uh, your clothes, blah, blah, blah. She said, oh, you are very good. <laughs> <laughs> you should have tried to get in the training program for a week. So I thought, definitely gonna forget it. You know, in China, we don't even have a, that time, we don't have a credit card, we oh. don't have a checkbook, everybody making very little money. Yes. And here, I have to learn program, the computer, yes. everything for a week. But lucky, I passed. So they put me uh, in a uh, petite department, and uh, I just uh, dive in, right? The Every... babies, the child department? No, the, for the petite, for the fashion. Oh, the, yes, yeah, yes. In Bloomingdale, yes. for uh, short, like, yes. my, like myself. So right. they put me there. And it's just the most the funny part was uh, anywhere I, I saw some people say, oh, can I help you? Yeah. They ask me, oh, a common kind. Oh, wait a minute, the common kind, common kind. I asked a salesperson, what's the common kind? They said, oh, it's a brand, I said, where? And they tell me I bring people in. Then the credit card couldn't go through, you have to oh, make a yes. phone. But that time, you don't, I don't have a phone before. So, oh my God, so hard to yes. have to learn everything. I have to explain why their credit card didn't go through, blah, 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 you know? So difficult. but. 
very soon I become a very good salesperson. So they try to get me the buyer training program. But they, after many interviews, they told me my English is not good. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn more English. So the same time, I met a person. He owned a fabric company. He, his wife is, is uh, from Asia. So that's how we become friends. Yeah. He said, that, you know, also I had a glass of wine. And we're all so happy. My Engl I feel my English is so great. So I was blah, blah, blah. So he told me, you are very funny. You should have worked for me. Sell oh. fabrics. I said, no, 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 I'm not sell fabrics. He said, if you come to sell fabrics, I will introduce you all the American designer. So I thought, that's a great idea. So I quit blooming that work for this guy. And uh, I from cleaning the showroom, cutting swatches, to answer the phone call, to take care of a young designer. So every young designer, I help them. I s always ask them, can I take you for lunch? Oh. Tell me how you succeed, yes. how you become a young designer. So I made a lot of friends. So then uh, when they cutting fabric leftover, they threw to garbage. Oh. So I took it home, made a little scarf. So that's how I started my career. I went to a shop. Everybody thought I look like a designer. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> wind shop, so not everybody, but wind shop. Then I tell them I will show them in a month. So a month later, I made all different size leftover fabric. So I sold for $5,000. I thought, oh my God, I'm so rich, I quit. Yeah. I want to become designer. So from scarf on, so I sold to Brooks Brother, Barney's, uh, Bertolf Goodman, uh, Henry Bendel, Shaw Vary at that time. So I sell only accessories until uh, Henry Bendel liked my scarf so much, they asked me to make a shirt for holiday for the customer. So I made a shirt, uh, make a button in the back, make a scarf. I want to sell the scarf. Right. Make a scarf have a hole, button yeah. hole. So try, oh my God, they love it. They give them big order and the size from a four to 14. I thought, how to do that? <laughs> so I called the little designer. I said, is it everywhere at one inch or half inch? You know, they said, no, you cannot do that. <laughs> you have to send to the pattern company. Oh. oh. <laughs> but how to sew a cut? I didn't even think about it. So w very lucky one day, just the same week, I went to a friend's wedding. Somebody asked me, oh, you're a designer. I, my roommate looking for a job. Really? Can he <laughs> cut sew? They say, yes. So we take care of that. So I become a designer. I'm making uh, clothes. Then the two, uh, two shirts, they ordered like uh, 250 pieces per one style. So second season, we designed eight pieces and for them. So very soon, I met a PR company, uh, Loving Wine Shop. They said that, you know, you should make a fashion show. We're going to make you rich and famous. I said, oh, I want the rich, not famous. <laughs> <laughs> but they're never rich in the right. end. Yeah. So that's how I started to become fashion designer. So I did a fashion show that everybody write about it, then everybody order my clothes. So that's how I started become a first Chinese from mainland China, had a fashion show in Bryan Park. Oh, you have a lot of courage. So that was just like, uh, that time I just felt like I, I have to do something like uh, for China, you know? Yes. I, I can do it. I never learned fashion design. I hired a pattern maker. Uh, I don't know how to cut and sew. So <laughs> hire everybody to do it. and. Uh, I, I tried to prove, you know, I can do it. So it was working so hard that made it happen, yeah. That's a lot of work, especially yeah, yeah. just English. Yeah, everything, you know. The, thanks God, a lot of the Chinese that time know how to cut the sew. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> so a whole bunch of Chinese work for me. And what happened after the department stores or Saks? All the department store, I realize, you know, actually until 2000, 
uh, September 11. Oh. At that time, I decided not doing fashion show anymore. And also, I don't really want to sell to a uh, department store because I always have a have to a job to get the money pay. Yes. And you have to pay discount dollars, you know, all this. Yes. So I thought, forget it, you know. So after September 11, we become much, much smaller. Then later, uh, Anthony Minghella invite me to do opera. How did that come about? Uh, that's actually a very great story, too. And um, uh, I love that story. Yeah, okay. Is, um, he's, so he's making Talented Mr. Ripley in New York. So his wife, a friend, wife's friend took them to showroom to look some clothes, buy some samples, you know. So she took it home to wear it, and her husband tell her, is this the same designer I bought your coat two years ago? Then they look at the label, same person. Then he told uh, his wife, said, you have to find her. I need to see her. So next day she called me up, asked me if, uh, do you mind to meet my husband and me? And uh, because he make a movie a little late, can we meet you like 7.30, 8 o'clock? As, uh, in your showroom. I said, no, 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 I invite you to my home and then you can come. So they came to my apartment. We just bonded that night. Uh -huh. And uh, he told me his story, you know, and uh, I tell him my stories. And uh, so then it was really, really funny. He said, have you ever done man's? I said, never. He said, okay, I'm your first customer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. From that on, he only, he, you know, all the Oscar, he wear my clothes. And then his wife and him together, we're like, uh, right, you know, with that. his wife, his little sister. So then 2002, I think, I got a phone call. Like uh, his assess, uh, assistant wanted to make a um, lunch date. So I meet him in the Mercer Hotel for lunch. And I thought it must be a lot of people because I didn't see him for a long time. So I went there, lobby, only him. I just asked, he said, yes. He said, uh, are you one of more people? I said, no, I'm just <laughs> shocking, just the two of us, you know, yeah. have a lunch. He said, yes, I have a job for you. I said, oh, what kind of job? Have you done opera before? I said, no, never. He said, me too. <laughs> Let's have fun. That's it. Yeah. So that's how I made the decision then working with the ENO, English National Opera House. So then was a some time change wherever really in production was two thousand four. Yeah. So that time I I ready to move back to China. Just too stressful here. I have a showroom, oh. I have a store. Many people work for me. I just uh, feel busy, just pay everybody's salaries. Yes. So I thought I'm quit. So I quit everything, set up a new showroom, everything in Shanghai. With fact, you know, our own design team and the sewing lady, cutting pattern maker, everybody. Like before was in New York, now we moved to Shanghai. That time I just thought I'd make sure I focused to do opera. I never done before. Yes. So how did you learn perspective? Or oh, size? I don't know anything that time. I just, uh, I thought, you know, I went a couple meeting. Nobody talked oh, no, to I me don't... about uh, my costume, right? So I went back to Shanghai. I made a lot of samples. Then we, I took six suitcase clothes oh. to London for a meeting. That's opening was 2005, September, but this is 2005, February. So I took oh. there, I said, would you imagine this for Cho Cho Sun? Can you imagine this for Pinkerton? I look at Anthony's face, he's not very happy. I thought, holy smoke, oh, what yes. am I gonna do? And uh, he said, okay, let's quit. You know, it's a Chinese New Year. And he said, uh, I'm going to do some other work, I come back. And I, you know, with the whole team, and I walk out, I had a big cry. Yes. Like, what should I do? I don't know. So the, the set designer, Michael Levine, said, you know, this is not fair. She spent so much time with us for the setting, everything. Nobody talked to her about the costume. 
Yes. And、uh, I'm not going to Chinese New Year dinner. Let's take out, figure、oh. out. And then he said, "I will help you to hire a assistant designer for you. So somebody know how to do presentation. You tell her how to, you know, what、yes. to do, right?" So then Anthony came back, so like nine o'clock. He said, "You know, I want to tell everybody that day one I hired Han Fang. I know I made the right decision. Now even more." I know I made the right decision. It's my fault. She told me day one she never done this. I forgot. <laughs> it's a, I just cried. Oh, how could it be your fault? You know, it's、yeah. my fault. So he said, go home wherever you want to go, New York or Shanghai, and one month later come back. I give you one week. Let's work on the、uh, custom. I said sure. <laughs> I went back to New York. Hired assistant, and I said, "Okay, you're gonna figure out 1910 American, you know, style. The, the style, the you know, this in the army with the and the Japan did all the research. Then a friend of mine、uh, introduced me, Tony Martin, I think is the、okay. custom designer、oh, in Hollywood."、Okay. And he's a very very old that time, and he agreed to have tea with me.、Oh. So he said to me, "You're, you know, he showed me all his perfect design. I thought, no way, I can paint like this, you know." <laughs>、uh, he said, "You know what? Don't worry about it. You're an artist. Do whatever your style." So I walk out of his home. I know what I'm going to do, and、uh, I'm going to do collage. I'm gonna collecting all the fashion magazine, all the friend, the, you know, gonna throw away the magazine used as my color,、oh. and I do collage. So a month later, I went to London. I took two suitcases, the design, the everything. So I put together with all. When I listen to Anthony's meeting, the the decision they have, the set, everything, and another is research. Then here's my design. So Anthony came, take a look. Half hour, he said, "Darling, one, you can go home now.、Oh. Finished, perfect, exactly what we need." How wonderful! How、fun. great is that? So then the, we did a great opening, a great show in ENO, 2006. A year later, we made it to Met. In New York, so it was so much press. So Anthony looked at me and said, "Hey, all my Hollywood friend talk about this opera. <laughs> and, you know, all the press talk about my direction and your custom、gotcha. design. I guess I made the right decision, right?" <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So, oh my God. So then, I, you know, because of him, I did other jobs. So I show him my new design. He said. You hired. You do all the opera with me.、Oh, Then he died. I was oh, cry so much. Just amazing, yeah. Just amazing experience, yeah. How how did you start life over again? I mean, you were going to go with him. That's a big job. Oh my God! I tell you, my heart completely broken. So then later, I thought that I almost I never depressed, but that time I depressed. Yes. I thought that. I'm finished. The first, and then second, I thought maybe God teach want to tell me I can't hold long on anybody.、Oh. I should learn walk with my two feet. That <laughs> is a lesson. After I said I have to go on. You know, he already gave me advice. He already taught me so much. So it's now my time to turn. To work. So it took me two, three months to really. Oh my God. It's a lot. So what did you decide to do? Because you had a lot of directions. So they are do. still doing opera at that time. Did a different opera. So with、right. the Royal Opera House, with the、um, many opera、yes. house. Yeah. And then I I did a one movie, Karate Kid.、Yeah. I designed、mm-hmm. the costume. In Beijing, work with the Sony with the、um, 
Will Smith, the son, yes. yeah, with them, yeah. So that's a great experience. But they still have a showroom in uh, Design Studio in Shanghai. So then until 2011, I decided, you know, in New York, everybody looking for me. Where are you? You know, yes. I have a connection here. Why, you know, how come you move back to China? Right. So now I decided that uh, 2011, I decided is that everywhere I stay one month, one month and a half, two months, back forth between Shanghai and uh, New York, and that become that bridge yes. to bring people to China, China to here. So oh, interesting. Yeah, so I also was a contributor editor for Departure magazine. Oh yeah, good. for ten years for all about the Shanghai. China, life. yeah, life. So I enjoyed that. It's a very fun. Yeah. So what brought you to now want to go more back or f for the beginning into art? Uh, right. Oh, I I was learning art. Right. Then never learn fashion, become fashion designer because <laughs> I look like it. Or right. Opera yeah, but from 2000, uh, 1990 that time, I already tried to help Chinese artists. Not because I want a smart investment, no. I thought, they, I go back, I thought, oh my God, everybody's still alive like that. So I always try to help artists from my school. And then luckily I made a very good investment. So always, uh, it's great when I need the money, I sell, <laughs> sell art, it. sell art. So, so then I become private dealer for a long time to bring, even I was designer still, bring Doing people that. to China to do, buy Chinese art. So now with the Shanghai Amman Resort, the, the owner know me very well and he know my taste. He asked me, would you use my full space that give you become art gallery? So I curated the show, I organized everything. So we're doing great, two years already. Have so artists. throughout your life, yeah, you take these risks. You just throw yourself into things you don't know really anything about, but ha by desire or need, you make them work for you. What part of you is because that? Because I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> I have to work hard. What are you going to do, right? I have to make a living, number one. Number two, I thought I do have a dream yes. a long time ago. I always want to have a dream. I want to be good wife and good mother, but definitely I'm not good wife and I'm not because you're not there. And exactly, and I'm not good mother. <laughs> no kids. I, I'm I'm kids for five dogs. Does that mean you'd like to have a child? I no. I like to have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> three in Shanghai, three two in New York. But I enjoyed it with the young people together, help young artists. Yes. And I think I'm a very good at catcher. Like people giving me opportunity. I'm never afraid. I How always do say that you're never afraid. That I'm not afraid. I said, oh, I'm gonna try. Even that time I cried so hard, but I thought, okay, let's figure out how to make it happen then. So I, I did, I made it happen. So, you certainly did. Yeah, so that's why I said, that, you know, all my life I feel I always try so hard either to make a living or help other people and giving love to others. And uh, that's why I receive love much more than I give. Because you gave so much. Yeah, I give a lot. I, yes, I'm do. a giver. So that's, that's also, <laughs> I think that's why my life is right now very, I don't have a, a lot of money, but I'm much rich than a lot of people the with, the, the, right. with the money. My, so you don't have aunties criticizing you? Huh? You don't have aunties criticizing you? No, I don't. I'm only child and my parents are all passed, uh, you know. But uh, my mother never dreamed. Like she's in China, she saw you know, when I, well, in 2004, I moved back, back to China, I'm Chinese role model, right? Yes, you I are. I was in the DR, you know, Ludovic. <laughs> my, my face don't look good at all, right? But the, 
they made me like a role model. Just the uh, also the Audi car, Mercedes car, all this they ask me as a role model. So my mother said, "Oh my God, you are in all these magazines in the in the billboard. You are yeah. in the face." Like my mother couldn't believe it. You know, the, her friend also proud of. And uh, yes. not believe it too. But myself, I, you know, one thing about me, I always two feet on the ground. I never feel like oh, that's so special. I feel I did something special. I just uh, feel, you know, everything I do, try to support my team, make sure those people have a job, still can sewing, cutting, do something. Do you think you came to America because the opportunity was here? What part of me that's just so brave? Come to here because yes. I feel in China that time in the school, you know, I do little different things. I become black sheep, you know, like oh, yeah. a, you just never, I, I, I don't really want to have to come to America. I can go to Africa, I go. <laughs> Any opportunities, you know, if I have, I will go, you know. Thank so. you very much. So we've learned a great deal from her. I am in awe of the ability to live without fear. But it isn't really that. It's, it's that she seizes the moment. She seizes opportunity. And she's learned to fake it a little bit. But she works hard. And that is the truth of life. If you want to accomplish something, you really have to work hard and long. And it's really nice for me to hear that in addition wanting to be rich or need a job, that now that she has a reputation and connections and she's done in a variety of artistic fields, that she feels and acts on the idea that you have to help somebody else in China primarily. And that's really good. You're holding out a hand and she says, I'm a giver. And if you're a giver, you want to give. That's rare. I'm glad you said something about that. And so there's a great lesson here, and that is <laughs> you don't know where you're going to end up, even on the pages or the billboard, but I want you to go with confidence into the future and with what you want to try. Tune in next week, and thank you for tuning in today. To contact Junia, send her an email at juniadonesthespark at gmail.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www. JuniaDoneTheSpark.com. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Junia Dones The Spark. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.